caused an explosion. Is this true? Yes, it's true. This man has no. Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault, and today we've got a Lego minifigure collection review for you. This is every single Lego Ghostbusters minifigure ever made. There are 26 minifigures included in this collection in total, and uh, that is counting the ghosts. That's actually quite a lot of figs, considering there were only really a couple of sets in total for this uh, entire franchise. So I'm gonna go through the collection in uh, the order that these minifigs were released, let you know how much they are worth and uh, the set they came out in. Let's uh, start with the very first Ghostbusters set that was ever made. This is the Ecto-1 and it was actually released under LEGO Ideas, so not necessarily the Ghostbusters theme. From this set we got a wonderful build for the Ecto-1 and of course the uh, four main crew, that being Egon Spangler, Peter Venkman, Raymond Stantz, and Winston Zeddemore. Taking a closer look at Egon first, uh, you can see the basic detailing on the front and back of the torso piece. This is pretty much exactly the same for all the different guys, of course, uh, the only difference being the initials on the chest. Each character also comes with a bracket piece for the neck and attached is the proton pack on their back. The pack has a single exclusive print that makes up some of the detailing. It's on that inverted uh, circular piece and it's a decent enough build. The nozzle or hose can be clipped onto the side or of course put into the minifigure's hand depending on what you want to do. Each one of these characters has special prints for their faces and they all have alternate expressions as you've uh, been seeing kind of flash by and generally speaking they did a great job putting these figs together. They are each six dollars. There's no difference between any of the characters. And then let's jump up two years to the year 2016. This is where the rest of the figs, 22 other Ghostbusters figures were released. Now half of them or over half of them all just came from this one massive set. This is the Ghostbusters Firehouse Headquarters. And here not only does the whole gang come back with updated prints, but we get a few of the other main characters as well as six Supernaturals. Let's just start by showing off the differences between the original gang and these updated guys. Now here is Egon and Egon. The newer version of the character has printing on his arms showing the Ghostbuster symbol on one side, an extra pocket on the other, and then they both have elbow pads. That is the biggest difference. All the new characters have this. And for Egon, that is actually the only update. When we get to Peter Venkman, he has the biggest differences with uh, the fact that he's been slimed. So the print for the torso and the face is very different. Also, there's a great updated Widow's Peak hairpiece in brown form, which is more appropriate. And you might have noticed that there are some slightly different builds for accessories. Raymond's stance is essentially the same as the guy before, except for the updated arms. And Winston has an updated hairpiece as well. Each one of these guys with the Proton Pack build included go for anywhere between $10 and $15. And let's take a look at some of the more unique characters. First up here is Dana Barrett, or there is no Dana, only Zool, depending on the expression that you use. And the detailing for this character is pretty spot on. She's got this sort of loose robe with a lot of gold and sort of sequins printed all over the body. The legs are dual molded. The hair piece is really perfect for this character with a nice big sort of curly 80s uh, thing going on. And Dana sells for around nine bucks. Next up here is Louis Tully, or uh, depending on the face print you have for him, this could be the Key Master. The print here is pretty spot on for this character. He's got the striped collared shirt that's really kind of messy and unbuttoned. There's even some nice splattered stains on the front. And the Rick Moranis expression on the front without him uh, being possessed is actually pretty recognizable. Louis is around six bucks. And now here is Janine. This one's a little bit harder to recognize as a character. You know, you can't hear a New York accent through a minifigure. But the print for the torso is absolutely excellent. There's a combination of plaid and you can see even the design on her collared shirt very well. She has a short haircut and two wonderfully printed expressions. I really do like those red glasses. She's also six dollars. And now let's get into the ghosts. From the opening scene of Ghostbusters 1, we've got the library ghost. There you can see her in a nice light purple and lavender. And in the front, she's got a nice print for an old expression on her face. She looks somewhat solemn. And this scene actually freaked me out when I was a kid, but she does turn into a monstrous beast when you turn the face around to the other side. Very cool fig and definitely one of the better ghost minifigs out there. This is the next one, the zombie driver, the taxi driver. Not necessarily a ghost, though they never really explain that in the movie. And this guy is awesome. He's got a great expression, sort of the evil smile on the front with the rotted flesh. The printing on the back of the head is great where you can see those thin wisps of hair. And then the rest looks like he's wearing sort of a leather jacket. It's missing some of the teeth on the zipper. And he really does come together with that nice beret on the top. This guy's around seven bucks. And then of course we have Slimer. Disgusting blob. 
He's easily the most beloved supernatural character in the Ghostbusters and probably one of the favorites of any ghosts out of any series. There's a special mold made just for him and his kind of uh, chubby wobbly body and he looks great molded in this nice light trans green. He comes with a hot dog which of course makes sense for him and the print on his face is well very appropriate. He is a seven dollar fig and uh, there were two other ghosts that came in this set. They were sort of the reused molds from Ninjago but they've been molded in new colors with the trans pink and the trans blue and they have their own special prints. I think these actually do mimic some of the real ghost faces that you saw in maybe some of the cutscenes. I like these extra guys and I think they fit in pretty well. I think they're around two or three bucks each. Now the next big set that released a bunch of Ghostbusters figs came from the reboot set. It's called Ecto 1 and 2, Ecto 2 being the motorcycle. And here we get the different cast that makes up the gang. This first one here is Abby Yates and let me just show her off a little bit longer just so you can get an idea of what the uh, new Ghostbusters suit looks like and honestly the detailing is really good. This time around there's printing on the legs, there's even more printing on the arms it looks like and the general detail we get on the front is actually kind of similar in the sense that we have the initials stitched right on the front just like the previous guys but I do appreciate the orange and silver highlights. The build for the Proton Pack is a bit different and these characters came with a lot more accessories. Abby here is around four bucks and the same here goes for Erin Gilbert and she also has some very strange looking accessories. The next is Jillian Holtzman. Her price goes up to six dollars and I think that is because of the exclusive hairpiece. Actually very awesome. I hope they find an excuse to keep using this hairpiece because I think right now this is the only time you can get it for this one character here. And the same goes for Patty. Her hairpiece is very unique, very different, and you can only get it with her for right now. And then there is the fifth member of the team and this is Kevin. Kevin also has an alternate expression to show that he is indeed possessed. And because he's I guess not as important of a character they just didn't give him any printing on the legs. Last minifig included is a pretty unique one. This is Mayhem. Not entirely sure which parts are unique just to this character. Definitely the wings, the head, and the mold for the head, but I'm not so sure about the appendages. Either way, the printing is great. I do like the printing that goes on the back of the wings. The face does feel a little bit simple to me, but he certainly feels like a unique enough character. This guy is also six bucks, and the last four Ghostbusters figs all were released individually in their own Dimensions packs. First up here is another Peter Venkman. This is the updated version of the guy that we would have gotten from the Ghostbusters Firehouse headquarters had he not been slimed. So it's a nice way to get an alternate version of the guy if you want a clean Peter Venkman. He is a $6 minifig and this next one is by far my favorite from the entire series. We've got the Marshmallow Man. Now granted he should be a brick built figure and he should, I don't know, stand something like a meter high because that's how he would be in universe but it's great to get him as a minifig. I think a lot of fans really wanted to bring this character back to life and this is a cheaper and easier way to do it. He currently sells for $7 and then there is a dimension set that also re-released Slimer. This time he's a darker green and the print for the face is slightly different. Basically just his tongue and drool are in a slightly different place. But other than that and the color of the body, nothing really changes. Personally, I liked the one from the firehouse headquarters a little bit more. I thought the print was better and he looks better as a lighter green, but that is just my personal opinion. Anyways, this is the very last figure from the entire Ghostbusters collection being Abby Yates. This is uh, the same version, almost the same version of her that we got from Ecto-1 and 2. The only difference being that she uh, has different expressions on her face. Now she's got a much more sort of kind of happy or amused smirk and the other one she looks maybe a little bit angry or she's definitely yelling. Also this time around Abby Yates's character has dual molded legs. They were actually probably just switched over from another member of the gang having the same dual molded legs from the Ecto-1 and 2 set but anyways that is it for the collection. This is all of the figs together and it seems very very doubtful Lego is going to do another Ghostbusters theme set but if we were to get another Lego Ghostbusters minifigure I think Vigo the Carpathian would make a pretty excellent fit. All right, that is it for this episode, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. If you have any ideas about another LEGO minifigure collection you want to see us do in the future, let us know in the comment section below. And you can learn more about our channel in the description, including our live stream schedule and uh, maybe a fan mailing address, whatever. Anyways, check the links in the description below. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.